Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the latest update to the G1000 NXi. It's now in version 060, and this update came in by surprise on a Monday instead of the normal Thursday marketplace updates. So let's dive right into the new features. As always, make sure to go to your profile and content manager within the sim to find the update. And if you don't have the NXi, go to the marketplace and search for G1000 and filter by free. The first major new feature is a dedicated traffic map page. But first we need to learn about page groups and pages. The MFT is organized into different page groups and each page group has multiple pages within it. And we navigate between the page groups and pages by using the large and small FMS knobs. You can change page group with the large knob and you can change to the individual pages within a group if there are any with the small FMS knob. So because the traffic map is within the map page group, use the small FMS knob to switch from navigation map to traffic map. So now that we're actually at the new traffic map, the first thing you'll notice is this big yellow standby message right here in the middle of the map. And that's because by default, the TAS or traffic advisory system is in standby mode. So to turn the TAS on, we need to hit this button under the label TAS OPER, and that'll place it in operational mode. So now we see the traffic on this dedicated traffic map page. You can also zoom this map in and out using the range knob on the right, just like you would the navigational map. Now, if you want to get back to the nav map, you do that by using the small FMS knob and then turning it to switch the page back to the navigation map page. Down on the bottom right, it says unres, which is that unrestricted altitude setting. But now we actually have more settings than that. So I'm going to go back to the traffic map page. And down here at the bottom, there's this new altitude mode soft key right here. I'm going to press this. And now you can see there are four altitude mode options for the traffic. The default option that we've had all along is unrestricted. This means that it'll show all traffic 9,900 feet above us and 9,900 feet below us, that entire range of almost 20,000 feet. The next setting is normal, which is similar to that, except it's a smaller range. So it's plus or minus 2,700 feet from our altitude. Then the other two settings are below and above. And you can think of these as saying, I'm mostly interested in the traffic below me, or I am mostly interested in the traffic above me. So the below setting shows 9,900 feet of traffic below us, but only 2,700 feet of traffic above us. And the opposite of that, the above setting, 9,900 feet above us, but only 2,700 feet below us. If you're departing from a major airport with lots of traffic, you may want to use the above setting to focus on traffic that you'll be climbing towards. And then the opposite of that, if you're descending towards your arrival airport, you may want to use the below setting to focus on the traffic that's below you. You may have noticed there was another new soft key down there called motion. So let's take a look at that. What this is, is traffic motion vectors. So let's go ahead and start with the absolute setting at the bottom. With absolute mode turned on, we get a small extended heading line in front of each plane on the traffic map. And this line will actually be longer or shorter depending on the speed of that traffic. Now we'll switch over to relative mode. This takes into account our aircraft's direction of travel and speed as well. So the green lines on each of the planes on the traffic map actually shows a forecast or a prediction of where that plane will be relative to our position. And by going to the duration soft key at the bottom, you can change how long of a prediction is shown on the traffic map. So here I've changed from one to five minutes. You can see that the green lines are much longer. That's indicating where the plane will be in five minutes time instead of the default of one minute. All right, moving on from the traffic map, the next biggest feature addition is OBS mode. People have been asking about this for a few releases now and we finally have it. What OBS mode lets you do is decide which course you wanna fly on to or from your current active GPS waypoint. And a common use case for this is to use OBS to make yourself a virtual extended runway. This makes it really easy to line up for a nice straight in approach to your destination airport. So I'm about to get to my destination and let's see how I did this using OBS mode. Because I'm using autopilot in GPS mode, the first thing I'm gonna do is sync the heading bug to our current heading, and then I'm gonna change to heading mode on the autopilot. And I'm doing this because when we use the OBS mode, it'll override our GPS course. So I don't want the plane changing directions just yet. 
So now what I'm gonna do is line up for runway one one using OBS mode. So I do that by clicking the OBS button on the left. And as soon as I click it, you'll see the course instantly change. So now you can see this magenta line. This represents the course that we're choosing ourselves. Now we can just dial in the runway heading of the runway we're gonna land at. Since we're landing at runway one one, you just add a zero to the end of the runway number and that gives you the rough heading of the runway. So one one zero is the course we're gonna dial in. And we do that just by using the triangular knob right here. And as I rotate it, you can see the new course being reflected on the map and on our HSI. So I'll turn this to dial in the course of one one zero. So now this magenta line right here represents a long extended runway line. So it'll make it really easy to line up with the runway. Now, because we're using that rough rule based on the runway number, the actual heading of the runway could vary by plus or minus five degrees. So if you want to dial in a more precise runway heading, you'll need to look up the actual runway information and find the actual runway heading in degrees. And then you can dial that in as your course instead of the rough estimation we're using. Next up, the NXI now has visual approaches in the procedures menu for all runways at all airports. So here I'm going to choose the visual for runway 35. And then down here you can see a preview of the points it's going to add to our flight plan. There's a point called straight, which is the initial approach fix final, which is the final approach fix, and then a missed approach point, which is the runway threshold. The final approach fix also has a VNAV target altitude automatically calculated for us, and that's based off the runway elevation and the standard three degree flight path angle for our descent. So we can actually use VNAV to do this descent all the way down to the final approach fix. Speaking of VNAV, something I haven't covered in the other update videos was a change to how you arm VNAV. If I go to my autopilot and just press the VNAV button, it actually won't arm anymore. And this change was made a few updates ago, but the reason for this is that you have to now first change your selected altitude on your autopilot. You used to be able to do it in the opposite order, but now you need to change this blue selected altitude number to something lower than you're currently at, so then VNAV has permission to do the descent. So I'm going to lower that from 9,500 feet down to 4,000 feet using my altitude selection knob down here at the bottom. And now that I've done that, I'll be able to arm VNAV. So if I hit the VNAV button, it will now activate. And we can see up here that VPath is now on standby. So just remember, you need to change the selected altitude to a lower altitude first before you're able to arm VNAV mode. All right, those are all the major updates for this version of the NXI. If you wanna see a full list of the changes and bug fixes, go ahead and check the link to the full release notes in the video description below. And as always, please leave any questions, comments, or suggestions, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.